Hey you travel lovers, welcome back to Old Lost for Life here on YouTube and today I'm so excited to show you a sweet tour of Amsterdam. So this is where we live, we love this city and we cannot wait to show you some of our favorite sweet things in the city. So let's go get our sweet tooth on. Let's go. Why do the sweets tour? Well, because there's so many food tours about what you should eat and what, where you should go, but my thing is, if you have a sweet tooth, where do you go? The thing that I want to point out is not everything is traditionally Dutch because this is a very international city and I think that it's worth showing the international sweets as well. So, I hope you enjoy. Our first stop is here at Van Stapel Cookies. We are right by Spau and they make one cookie and when they sell out, they are done for the day. So get here early. The cookie is a chocolate cookie with the white chocolate inside and it's just absolutely amazing because they bake them fresh all day long. So let's go get a cookie. get your cookie it comes wrapped in this little bag with this beautiful little seal on it and one black napkin which you will probably need there's the magic so hopefully you get it freshly baked out of the oven and it'll be gooey inside Whoa. so there's you can see some chocolate chips and the white cream inside which I believe is white chocolate so they use the best ingredients as I said before and you can really taste it so let's give it a try Mm. It's still super soft, and the gooeyness just turns into creaminess in your mouth. And it's just such a rich flavor, so it's a little cakey. Um, but just all the chocolate, all the flavors in there make this one of the best things that you can have in Amsterdam. So we're starting off on a good foot. Yeah. The cookie place that you just saw is right down the street. It is tiny, it is four bikes, so be very careful when you line up. Follow the instructions if there's um, a sign where it says where to line up and just stay on the side so you don't get hit by bikes because you know there's a ton of bikes here. But it's definitely worth a visit and hopefully you get there when you're in Amsterdam. So a number one thing right after the cookie that you have to get when you're here in Amsterdam is a strawwafel. We're here at Van Valder and they've been doing strawwafels since 1907 and they are here on Calverstraat, not far from the cookie place. The only thing is they're kind of pricey at like $5.50 per medium strawwafel. So if you go to the Albert Kite Market, you can get a strawwafel for much cheaper. But what they do is they dip half in chocolate and put like one of 10 different toppings on top if you want. But strawwafel is um, basically a waffle cookie sliced in half and then put syrup inside, but not maple syrup. It's a different kind of syrup, but it's not as sweet as you think it is, and it's delicious. Give it a try. We're in the midst of our sweets tour, and I just feel so bad just eating sweets all day. So we stopped at the cold press juicery, which is the one behind me. There's a bunch of different juiceries um, in Amsterdam, so it's really easy to find one. I really like this one. Um, I don't know, the service is always really good. They have acai bowls too, I believe. Um, so I got ananas, which pineapple, um, strawberry, red beet, and ginger, and Sean got a completely different one. I don't know what he got, but yeah. If you're doing a sweet tour, <laughs> try to get something healthy in between. Now we are off to somewhere epically Instagrammable. So we are off to Polarberry, Polarberry, and it's one of the most photographed foods I think in this city. So I'm gonna show you why, and then you can take those same pictures when you get here. As I told you, we were going to a super Instagrammable place, and doesn't it look like it's just that? So, Polarberry makes these cute little strawberries, they're chocolate covered strawberries, but not just any chocolate, it's Belgian chocolate. And we got the daisy one, and it's made of ruby chocolate, which means it was a red cocoa bean, so apparently it has a different flavor to it. And then a salted caramel one. They both sound amazing, so they were $2.20 a piece, so obviously a little pricey, but it's in the center of Amsterdam. What do you expect? So, let's give it a taste. Mmm. Ooh. I totally get what you said. Although, 
that it's a different tasting chocolate. It tastes almost like in between regular milk chocolate and a white chocolate. So it's pretty good. I think Sean will like this. He likes white chocolate more than I do, but it's like the perfect amount of coverage on the strawberry. And obviously the cute daisy on top does not hurt. <laughs> Salted caramel. Ooh. It took me a minute, but salted caramel comes through. This is almost a little too sweet for me. I would go, I would actually recommend a daisy one. Obviously we didn't try all the flavors, but maybe one day we'll get to try them all. Mm. They're all chocolate. So Sean thinks the strawberries are even better than the cookie. I'm not sure if I agree, but the red strawberry, the, the red chocolate strawberry was amazing. But I just wanted to say, like, as we're walking in these streets, because we're doing this um, on two feet, not two wheels, and I'm always like, no, I'm not gonna bring my bike into the center, blah, blah, blah. And then I get into the center, and I'm like, I wish I had my bike. <laughs> Yeah, Sean agrees, so I kind of feel bad. Next time we come out though, I think we'll bring our bikes. So how we would get here is we take a ferry from the north over here and then you just cycle through the center and it's super easy. It's just when you haven't done it for a while, it's very intimidating, which is why I don't usually recommend for tourists to cycle. Um, but as tourists cycle by me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's so nice to cycle here when you understand the rules and everything. But. Next time. Next time. Okay. Following the chocolate theme, we are headed to a chocolate shop. It's Buccini Bomboni, and it's one of the first chocolate shops we've had in the city. And they specialize in specialty chocolates, so they're kind of bigger. They're special flavors, a little pricey, but it's definitely worth just to get a taste of something a little different. So let's go get some chocolate. chocolates we have cinnamon and ginger which we have not had before uh, cinnamon was probably the first thing that we tried when we were in Amsterdam um, that was a chocolate and then we also got thyme we're gonna try all three of them start with uh, cinnamon so it's even dusted with uh, cinnamon on top but I love a little teardrop mm. it's like it's not like cinnamon sugar because it's all cinnamony flavor, but it's just wonderful creaminess. It's almost like a cinnamon butter. It has that kind of texture where you can like put it on top of something, but it's in a chocolate. This is thyme, and the idea of like herbs in chocolate sounds really interesting. Ooh. Doesn't seem right. I think I want to keep time on my chicken, not on my chocolate. And then ginger, which I saved for last because it just seemed right. <laughs> okay. It looks super creamy as well. There, you can see better. <laughs> it's not super spicy. It just tastes like the flavor of ginger without the spice of ginger. That's super, super, super sweet. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. Do just what you want. You're the one I trust. All right, for the number one dessert in Amsterdam, as I've seen written somewhere, we are here at Sweet Bob. So this is on the corner of Prinsengratz and Brouwersgratz. Those are two canals. This is such a beautiful area. If you don't even come for the Brigoderos, you have to come here just to look around. But anyway, as I said, they do Brigoderos, which is a Brazilian dessert. It's cocoa powder, condensed milk, and butter. <laughs> Can you really go wrong? So we got a traditional one. 
So this is milk chocolate, and I actually have a friend who makes these for me, and they're amazing, so I already know I'm gonna love it. So here we got the milk chocolate, a dark chocolate, and Sean wanted something a little different because they have a bunch of different flavors inside. The creme brulee. So I don't actually know what else is in it to make it creme brulee, but we're gonna give it a shot. So we're gonna try the traditional one first. Oh, and sorry for the noise. I think there's a soccer team over there. They're also covered in chocolate sprinkles, and I kinda just wanna lick them all off. I won't do that, but. Mm. You see how gooey that is? There's anything that is a guilty pleasure, a bricotero would be it. All right, so that was milk chocolate, or original. I'm gonna try, ooh. It's also very squishy, so they're in ball form. He also told us traditionally, you could also just make a bowl of it and bring a spoon. <laughs> I think it was probably if you're just with family, <laughs> or just eating it yourself. Mm. I think I like the dark chocolate even better. And I'm gonna give the creme brulee one a try, even though it's one Sean picked out. No? <laughs> well, I'm the one sitting here in front of the camera, so I'm gonna try it anyway. All right, so you can see the sugar on top, and it's caramelized just a little bit, and you can see like the uncaramelized sugar on the side, so it's gonna be probably a little sweeter than the others. Hmm. So it's super vanilla. That's pretty much all you get is the, is the vanilla flavor. But you get a little bit of that um, sugary, um, what do you call that, like charred sugar on top. It's really good. So if you're looking for something like this, again, this is such an international place that I really wanna showcase all the really good sweets um, come here. It's, I think it was 150 for each ball. So uh, you only really want one, maybe two, because they're really, really sweet. But come and try Sweet Bob's while you're in Amsterdam. There's a spike in the middle of the sidewalk. It's one of my biggest pet peeves because bikes can be parked in so many places you don't have to block people from walking. It's just annoying. So what are you gonna do about it? Well, Sean suggested I throw it into the canal. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because I'd probably get in trouble. Um, I think I'm just gonna push it over a bit. I think, I mean, that's nice, right? So move it. You might notice a change of clothes, and that's because we are doing day two of the sweet store. We weren't necessarily planning on it, but there are so many amazing sweet places that we want you to discover while you're here in Amsterdam. And the heat wave started, so we are wearing a lot less clothes as well. But we are still gonna show you a whole bunch of delicious things to find in this city, so let's keep eating. One of the best places to get pies and cakes in Amsterdam is Holtkamp. So it has actually been around since 1969, but there's been a confectionery there since 1886. And it is the place, if you're working in an office, to get pies or cakes or whatever you might want because it's just the best in the entire city. We are on the side of the canal with our Dutch apple pie, or as they call it, apple tart. And the recipes for Dutch apple pie go back to 1514, so it's not all American apple pie. So there's a couple differences. This one looks pretty traditional, just with um, the apples and the raisins inside. They do typically have raisins here, um, but it's just so delicious. What I do want to say is I did say Holtkamp is one of those places that you have to get your cakes and your pies. If you want to go to a restaurant, there are a couple different restaurants. I'll list them in the description below that we also highly recommend if you want to sit down and eat your apple pie, but is there any Anything more Dutch than eating apple pie next to a canal? I don't think so. So let's give it a taste. Oh my god. It's not super sweet. Um, there are not, aren't typically like a whole lot of super sweet treats here. But you can see the inside, it's filled with apples and raisins, and there's um, a coating. We think it's like a a citrus glaze on top. And the crust is uh, typically pretty thick. I don't know if you can see that. And different places that you go will have different styles of apple pie, but they're all Dutch apple pie and they're all freaking amazing. So, we 
would you say macarons or macarons for the little sandwich type things? Those are macarons. I always say macarons. Maybe you're right. I think I might be wrong. Because there's the coconut ones that I'm pretty sure. Those are macarons. Don't Everything's a macaron. <laughs> I just see macarons for everything and I know it's wrong. But I feel like we need to double check. <laughs> Our next stop is here in the Revere and Burt neighborhood in Zoud, which means south part of Amsterdam. And it's not a place that a lot of tourists get to, but it's on our sweets tour because we love macarons. And the guy who created Patisserie Tout is Jo van Berkel, and he is one of the first people to bring it to the Netherlands, bring macarons, I mean. And they were first created by La Dure in 1930. So if you're in Paris, definitely check that out. But here in the Netherlands, they specialize in chocolate. So their ganache um, filled macarons are pretty much the most famous here, but we're gonna get some of those and some of our favorites as well and show you what they're all about. This is tomato basil, pure chocolate, V2C gin and tonic, and a Madagascar vanilla. We're gonna give these all a try. Um, we're gonna start with Madagascar vanilla since it's the mildest flavor. And if you haven't ever had a macaroon, it's kind of like a meringue cookie with a ganache or some other kind of creamish filling on the inside. It just depends on what they wanna do. So this is Madagascar vanilla. It's very firm. Don't. So, I really like this. The flavor is really good. Um, it's more like a heavier macaroon, where sometimes you get that they're both, the cake is light and fluffy, and the inside is super, super light and fluffy as well. So this is more of a stronger one. The flavor is amazing. Sometimes you get too much vanilla flavor and it just tastes fake. That just tastes really good. Moving on to the V2C gin and tonic one. So Vita C Gin is from Amsterdam, and it's one of our favorite gins um, to use with tonic. So this should be delicious. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Does it taste like a gin and tonic? It definitely tastes like a gin and tonic. All you need is it to be frozen, because gin and tonics are filled with ice to make it super, super ice cold. This is so good and so cool. And it's summertime right now during heat wave, as I mentioned, so that's awesome. Next is pure chocolate. So because they're known for the chocolate on the inside, I'm expecting this to be excellent. Ooh. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one is a bit more squishy than the vanilla. Maybe the vanilla was just a bit colder, but you can see this one kind of is, I can push it and it just kind of comes apart, which is totally fine by the way. Um, but the inside, it's just very strong chocolate. It has a deep, rich flavor. Um, it's very sugary, but it, it's in, in a good way for chocolate. I saved this one for last and I'm not sure this is a good idea. Sean wanted this one, so he's getting it at the end. But this is tomato and basil. So one of the other things that they're famous for is just trying different flavors. And yeah, so they have like olive oil, they have lychee, they have just all kinds of crazy flavors in my opinion, but it looks good, yes. Oh. Mmm. That is so surprising. So it's also, so it's tomato and basil. And I don't know if you know what a caprese salad is, which is tomato, basil, and mozzarella, and it's the colors of the Italian flag. I think that's what this is supposed to represent as well. Um, it kind of tastes like a caprese salad. Is it sweet or savory? It's savory, but it's still sweet. Like, I don't, I don't know, you totally get the tomato basil without it being weird, because I was afraid it was gonna be weird, but it's not. It's actually really good.
We're here at Cheesy Cakes, and I actually discovered this by just Googling different sweet things, but he has so many five-star reviews that we just had to come and try it for ourselves. And what I discovered is he has no baked cheesecakes, regular baked cheesecakes, like New York cheesecake, um, but also gluten-free, vegan, all kinds of stuff. So there's gonna be a cheesecake for you. And he bakes everything here in this little shop, which I think is amazing. We got key lime pie. Um, cheesecake, so I guess not pie. <laughs> you miss. I miss my mouth. <laughs> the crust. I think sometimes my favorite part of cheesecake is the crust. But this, the flavor, is just so perfect. Because, like, if it's too tart, it's not very enjoyable for me, but this is perfect. And what's funny is, this is not whipped cream. Can you hear that? It's meringue. <laughs> and we're gonna go in and try to find a cupcake for this hot weather. So let's go see what kind of cupcakes we can find. Another one of the first places that we discovered when we moved to Amsterdam was Van Ness Cupcake and she is the nicest owner. Um, and she does a whole range of cupcakes. They're super high quality and super delicious and she has a bunch of vegan ones. Um, I think she's expanded to cinnamon rolls, which is next on our list, but not today. <laughs> um, today, because it's so hot, we got a lemon curd um, cupcake, and you can see there's cream on top, lemon, and I'm guessing there's gonna be lemon on the inside. I'm gonna take a bite and hope that I don't make a huge mess of myself. Mmm, mmm, that is so good. So it's just the right amount of tart and sweet and the cake is super moist as it always is. Um, I usually like to get the Oreo one or the chocolate one. You really can't go wrong here. And this is on Rosengrad, so we're more towards the center again and um, there's a bunch of shops around here so it's a great little area to just walk around a window shop. It's really, really hot today. So after the cupcake place, we were supposed to head to an ice cream place but there is something going on to where all the trams are shut down, but there's no police or um, like public transit people to tell you that. We're trying to find a different way to get there since the other way was shut down. Um, and we're trying to stay in the air conditioning as much as possible. So some metros have air conditioning, some trams have air conditioning, some don't. So keep our fingers crossed. Right now we have air conditioning and it feels amazing. So wish us luck. We didn't get to our final spot because of all the things going on in the city. We just couldn't get there in a reasonable amount of time, but it is super easy to get to. Normally, we'll leave the link in the name below. It's called Eismannstra, which I hope I'm saying it right. Basically, it's an ice cream pop that you can dip in different things, decorate yourself, and it's super refreshing. We'll leave all the information of every place that we've been below. I hope you really enjoyed this as much as we have. Um, we definitely have a sweet tooth, but we hope you really find that Amsterdam can be a little bit more than what you think it is. So if you like these kinds of videos, give it a thumbs up and we will bring you more of these, especially from Amsterdam. And we hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you next time. Bye.